Hello, my name is Felicia Sigurd. I am a dental hygienist and the author of Head and Neck by Numbers. These online video resources are one of the great new features of our third edition. I will be directing your students through my workbook so they can come prepared to class or use it as an additional resource after class. While I will be adding a few interesting facts and some helpful mnemonics, my purpose is to guide your students through the names, locations, and relationships outlined in this text. Each figure has a video. They go about 5 to 12 minutes and they will be posted on our website, anatomynumbers.com and on YouTube. These videos will be available April 1st, 2013. In this video, I have provided sample footage from figure 16, 9, and 28. Oh, and one more thing. In order to keep our video short, we went through the images really quickly, so feel free to pause the video so you can take all the time you need. Figure 16 is all about the cranial nerves. Now, you might have touched on cranial nerves in general anatomy, but now we're going to use a little bit more detail. So number one in your book is the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve number one. It exits the skull through the cribriform plate, that's part of the ethmoid bone. It innervates your sense of smell, and therefore it is a sensory nerve. Next is number two, the optic nerve. But before we move on to the optic nerve, let's be honest. It's really hard to keep those first three cranial nerves straight because they all start with O, olfactory, optic, and oculomotor. So I've had trouble with this forever since hygiene school. When I was teaching it though last year, one of my students pointed out something brilliant and hopefully will help you. The olfactory nerve is cranial nerve number one and you have one nose. The optic nerve is cranial number two and you have Two eyes. Brilliant! I think the lateral pterygoid is one of the hardest muscles of mastication. It's hard because it's difficult to imagine its actions. So I'm going to give you a secret weapon on all of your tests. Ready? Put them up. I'm serious, actually. Pull out your little guns. I want to see them. Where are your guns? Okay. So you're going to take your guns and you're going to make a mandible. So you've got your body, your angle, your ramus. A mandible. So, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where this muscle originates and inserts. The lateral pterygoid muscle originates on the sphenoid bone and inserts here on the ramus. So when that muscle contracts, it pulls the ramus forward. So, get your mandible up here and let's contract right and left lateral pterygoid muscles. As they pull forward, your jaw is protruded. Yep. Then, let's contract it a little farther and it opens your jaw. You know the first two actions, protrusion and opening of the jaw. The third one's a little more tricky. So you get your mandible up here again, and now we're gonna deviate the jaw. The way you do this is you contract either the right or the left side. So let's contract the right side. Here it goes. To the right, moving forward, and it tips that jaw to the left. Let's try it with the other side. We're gonna contract the left side, moves forward, and it deviates to the right. So you can always remember that whichever one is moving, it's going to deviate to the opposite side. As we look at the PSA, let me tell you why I created the local anesthesia images. In anatomy, it's really easy to divide things into systems. The skeletal system, muscular system, vascular, nervous, etc. But that starts to fail you when you get to local anesthesia. You have this moment where you're looking into your patient's mouth and you need a comprehensive idea of what you're seeing. And it's pretty hard to do if you've got the pterygoid plexus from figure 14 and the maxillary bone from figure 2 and the parotid gland from figure 24. So I took these images to combine it all together so you can see how they each interact and so you can be a better clinician.